Yo, what's up, dorks? Welcome back to yet another educational English video. I am your new dad. And at your guys' request, we're doing something that I've been asked countless times to do and I've been putting it off and putting it off. I'm not going to put it off any longer. You guys have asked me to make a video on how to replicate my accent, my very, very unique American accent. And so that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, and... We're going to have fun in the process, so stick around because it's going to be a good time. So I'm from northern Ohio, which is really, it's on the Rust Belt. It's, it's, it's along the Great Lakes, and people in that entire region, all the way from Buffalo, New York, all the way through Detroit, are said to have one of the most understandable American English accents. And so today we're going to be thinking about how to talk like me and how to replicate that accent when you speak, because in most accent training videos you guys see, or most speaking videos you guys watch, they always tell you, pick somebody that you like and try to sound like them. I've had a few of you guys reach out and ask me to do this, so here we are. I hope I don't let you down. As always, make sure you smash that like button on this video because that really motivates me to make more content. I'm going through a little bit of a slump because YouTube has stopped showing my videos to most of my subscribers and it's not showing it to any new people. So please, by all means, make sure you hit that like button because that helps me go a really long way uh, and, and interacting with it. And stick around all the way to the end of the video because that's even the most important part. And if you're really, really into it, maybe consider subscribing to the channel uh, every person that does that also helps. Uh, I, I make a few English videos every single week, sometimes three a week, sometimes two a week, sometimes more than that every week. And it's just a great place to get in contact with other people who are learning English. So anyways, now let's learn some English. So let's get down to the bottom of what makes my accent so understandable. And I really think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I was born American. I never had to learn English. I grew up speaking English. And so, I mean, that's really the benefit to myself. But since I've been challenged with doing this video, I've really put a lot of thought and ideas into, well, what makes me sound the way that I sound? And this is going to be a list of things that I compiled to help you guys have a few ideas on how you could sound a little bit more like a native English speaker with this Northern Ohio or Rust Belt accent. The first one is that I speak slowly, but not too slow. There's a little bit of a catch there because speaking speed really controls how much people can understand. I know it might sound crazy being a non-native English speaker being told to slow down when you speak, uh, but it's really a, a lot of English speakers that are non-native make this mistake. They think that speaking faster means that you have better English and that's not always the case. As a teacher, at least once a week in my classes, I have to tell my students to slow down or one of my students to slow down entirely because when you speak too fast, what happens is that you just become un-understandable. You cannot understand somebody who is Now, the speaking level that I use is a little bit manufactured. In Ohio, people don't talk as slow as I do. People talk a lot faster than me. And when I first moved to Italy, I knew that I had to slow down because people would say, ma che fai, piano, piano, which means slow down. <laughs> All of my friends would just like, they couldn't understand me when I spoke English because I spoke way too fast. But after a while, I learned to control my speed and slow it down. But here's the thing, you can't go too slow because if you go too slow, you're gonna put me to sleep. So to give you a quick example of what it used to sound like when I used to talk to people, uh, I would, I'm gonna give you a rundown of my day in my uh, kind of speaking speed that I would talk to somebody from my hometown with, like when I talk to my brother or when I talk to my mom or dad or my friends. Hey man, how's it going? Yeah. Oh, no way. What'd you do today? 
Oh yeah? All right, cool. Oh yeah, me? No, I, I woke up pretty early. Dude, I'm so tired. I had to do this and then I had to run all the way to the store and then I had to pick up a few things. I came home. I started a pot roast, which I'm pretty excited about eating tonight, but uh, that's in the slow cooker right now. Uh, and then I got to run to the coffee shop. I got to pick up a couple bagels for breakfast tomorrow. And then, you know, that's about it. So maybe we can go catch something later, right? I'm sure you didn't understand me clearly. I'm sure you understood some things that I said, but if you want to sound like me, that's not how I normally talk. I slow down when I talk to you guys. When I talk to my friends in the USA, it's always much faster. The problem is that sometimes English learners, they try to sound like native English speakers without sounding like a native English speaker. So they'll copy that speaking speed and then it just becomes a jumbled mess where you can't understand anything. Like, People just need to slow down when they speak to make themselves more clear. So the big like takeaway with this is just to slow down to a speed that is understandable without boring me to death because that is also a case that could happen. You might just make me fall asleep. <laughs> now let's talk a little bit about intonation. I've said it similarly in my uh, syllables video, but English is a very musical language. Now I'm not saying that it's Italian or that it's Spanish levels of, of musicality, but it is musical, more so compared to some other languages, maybe languages that you already speak. English has rhythm, and we carry that rhythm by using intonation. Listen to me say this phrase here. Think about how musical the English language is. I'm going to say it one more time, but this time I'm not going to use words to say it. I'm going to hum it out, and I want you to kind of listen for the, the ebbs and flows of this sentence. <laughs> I don't even know if I said it. Let me try that again. I might need to practice. I'm not used to humming out sentences. Let me try this one more time. <laughs> that I definitely said it. Were you able to hear the music? Let's try that one more time. <laughs> I think you heard it that time. There was a little bit of a rhythm there. Ah, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. I heard it, I think you heard it, but we're gonna move on. Because here there's actually some rules to follow when using intonation. For example, when I ask a question, you can almost always hear the huh? at the end of a sentence. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Right? You hear that eh? 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 at the end of a sentence or at the end of a question. It's like the question mark itself is taking on its own personality and making itself heard in the sentence. Let's try for a quick example. Where do you want to go for dinner tonight? <laughs> Did you catch it? Let's try that one more time. Where do you want to go for dinner tonight? See, I know you heard it there, but listen to me say it without any intonation and, and see how that sounds. Where do you want to go for dinner tonight, right? Without saying that tonight, but tonight. It changes the entire way that that word rolls off the tongue and pops into the ears of the people listening. And if that's how I spoke, you probably wouldn't want to listen to me very much, but by controlling the the speed of that sentence and that uh at the end of it, you're able to really understand what it is that I'm trying to say. Now here's the thing, because I know I don't sound like every American, and th this is kind of why. Uh, most American English speakers have a larger dive in their speak. They'll say, where do you want to go tonight? Where do you want to go? I don't really do that I tend to kind of make mine flatline a little bit and only intonate the ending. Uh, but one rule of thumb for a general American accent is that whenever you have a WH question or a how question, you always intonate the beginning of that word and then dive down all the way up to the end of the sentence. So like, where do you want to go to dinner tonight? Where do you want to go for dinner tonight? How are you doing today? I actually do this for the how Part. I don't do it for the others, but always for the how, like, how are you doing today? How are you, right? That it does it for me, but usually not for the WHs. But keep that in mind, WHs always in intonate at the start. They dive down, and then they pop back up. Where are you going tonight? 
And for me, one of the more important things about sounding more clear when you speak English is actually not about how clear you sound or the way you intonate things, but rather the amount of time you give people to understand what you're saying. And to accomplish this, I like to pause often when I speak. Because when I give you a bit of information, I want you to be able to absorb it before I give you more. Like, for example, if I'm talking to my boss, I'll say something like, hey, so John was talking about taking leave on the 31st. Now, I paused a few times in that statement to say, hey, she can respond. So we're talking about something. John asked for to, about taking leave. She can understand that on the 31st, right? Giving those, those automatic pauses in your speech make you sounds so much more understandable. I really can't explain how important taking those pauses really is. It's like the most important thing. And here's why. Because when you break your sentence into different thoughts, it allows the person you're speaking to to catch up with you and then process that information as you go. Let's try an example. I'm thinking about starting up a podcast, but I'm not getting many views on with my normal content, so I'm not sure if it would get views either. In the first sentence, I gave you a lot of time to understand what I was thinking about doing, and then in the second sentence, I gave a reason why I may, probably won't do it. A and what I did was I took these pauses so that you were able to fully understand that sentence. I'm gonna read this sentence one more time without taking a pause. I'm thinking about starting up a podcast, but I'm not getting many views on the normal content, so I'm not sure it would get any views, right? You wouldn't understand that as clearly without me taking those pauses. And pauses don't have to be very long. They could be short. Like I just said, long or very short, right? Even that tiny little pause right there between long and very short, long or very short, do a ton of work for you, right? It's really important just to, to slow down your speech, intonate what's supposed to be intonated, and give pauses, time for me or whoever you're speaking to, to absorb what you have to say, to hear your message, to process your message, and then listen for more. And I know that talking about pausing just sounds similar to the first idea, which was to slow down, but it is a bit different. Pausing isn't about speaking speed, it's about giving time for people to understand exactly what you're saying. Let's move on. Another really important idea to follow through with is looking at your syllables and making sure you're putting the stress on the right part of your syllables. So I already made a video on how syllables work and I'll link that in the description down below if you haven't seen it. Uh, but if I put that in here, it would be like an extra 10 or 15 minutes that just really isn't necessary for you guys. Um, but what we could do is talk about a few rules that happen when you're using syllables. And some of these are a little bit easier than others, but starting with the first one, when we talk about compound nouns, the stress syllable is always on the first one. So green house, snowman, right? Green house, snowman. You feel those right there at the beginning. When we're talking about compound adjectives, like if you say the sentence, Sean has become a fat ass, well, it's always the second part, fat ass, or she is a gold digger, gold digger, right? It's always the second one that has the, the, the stress there. And then the last one we're going to talk about for this really short section on syllables is compound verbs like uh, we put the stress at the very end of the sentence. For example, the words understand. When I speak slow, you can understand me. Or overflow. I'm parking in overflow parking. Overflow. All right. So the best thing to do when looking up a word is, is find out how many syllables it has and where the stress in that syllable is because not every word follows the same rules and you'll just help yourself along the way to kind of plot this out ahead of time. You learn a new word, look it up, how many syllables does it have and where is the stress? This is something that I do with my students 
every time we learn a new word to the point where sometimes it's annoying for them, but they all speak really clearly. And and that's the most important thing for me. Uh, and, and look, doing this will really help you go very far with your language skills. And the very last one, if you're still here, uh, is using pitch when you say words. It's really, really annoying when people do not do this. This is where the language really becomes creative and you get to change it and do whatever you want with the English language. You get to do anything. It's like adding a bit of spice to your speaking. You're stretching some words out. You're making some shorter. You're making parts of words louder and you're rolling with what you want to say. It's a lot of fun to use pitch when you speak. My dad used to say this thing to me all the time and he would look very sternly at me usually while, while punishing me for something, but he'd say, it's not what you say that matters, it's how you say it. And honestly, he's not wrong at all. Let's do some role playing for a second. Pretend that we're talking to somebody that we're really attracted to, we want to be around them. And if you look them deep in the eyes and say, Hey, do you want to go to dinner tonight? They're probably either going to pepper spray you or they're going to reject you and think that you're an absolute creep. But if you use a little bit of pitch and you look at them very carefully and you say, Hey, do you want to go get some dinner tonight? All of a sudden, they're probably still going to tell you no, but you don't sound so weird when you talk that way. You don't sound weird at all. It's a lot better. And the reason for this is because the way we say something changes its meaning. When you say something with like a really negative stress on everything or really positive stress on everything, maybe what you're saying is completely wrong. And, and it's not your fault. You just probably haven't thought a lot about this. How you say things changes what you actually say. We're going to play another game. Here's an example. If I said... I'm doing this on my own accord. I swear that by no means am I being forced to do this, nor am I being held captive. I can leave whenever I want. The first thing you're going to think is, damn, that dude is a captive. But if I say it like this, I'm doing this on my own accord. I swear by no means am I being forced to do this, nor am I being held captive. I can leave whenever I want. The first thing you're going to think is, damn, that dude's not a captive. Pitch, baby. Pitch. And intonation and all of that Mac wrapped up into to one thing. You get to modify the way you speak and you get to make what you want to say really, really, really clear and understandable. Uh, it's what you're missing. It's probably, this is probably actually the key ingredient that you're missing. Well, uh, those of you guys who have commented this on the channel, but hey, we all learn. Right, that's why we're here, we're getting better. So let me just do a quick review. These are the rules. One, slow down, man. A shadow for my microphone. This is my microphone right here. Slow down, baby, slow down. The next one is remember to intonate your parts of speech. Put your, uh, at the end of your questions and stress words that need to be stressed. And the next one is to speak clearly by making pauses. So pause when needed. Number four is to work on your syllable stressing. Make sure you're stressing the right part of the word for words that need that. Actually, all syllables have a stress, but you know what I mean. And the last one is pitch. Use your pitch to your advantage and modify the language and make it unique all into your own. Do all, of, all five of these things and you will be the Lion King. If you found any one of these five things useful today, then make sure you smash that like button on this video. Make sure you punch that subscribe button right in the nose. Make it bleed all over your screen and uh, tickle that little bell for notifications because after you punch something, it's just rude to leave it in pain. And join the Discord. I haven't pitched that in this video. Join the Discord. We have a blast over there. We try to have a blast. You guys have been 
freaking lazy this month. I want to play video games with you guys, and you guys are just too busy all the time. Uh, but hey, stick around, because as always, I have a little bit of affirmation going in 5, 4, 3, 2, As always, a quick bit of affirmation. I try to put the jokes away and be serious, talk to you mano a mano, and uh, share my love for you guys. Uh, look, you're doing awesome, and the fact that you're on YouTube to make yourself better at a skill that's really important, that's good. Nobody's putting a gun to your head and telling you you need to be better at English. You're doing that on your own because you want a better life, and. I'm very proud of you for that. So don't let anyone take you away. Uh, don't let anyone take you away. Don't let anyone bring you down. Be proud of yourself. Stand there. Put your shoulders back, your chest out, and Auga! I love ya. And I'll see you in the next video.